Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be talking about a really great trick that's going to not only plump your lips, but really keep your lipstick on your lips when you're wearing a dark color this fall. Are you ready? Let's get this beauty started. Going right into priming my face with SPF 30. This is Trish McAvoy. This is Beauty Booster Cream SPF 30. I bought this with the anniversary sale over at Nordstrom's in the summer and it came in a big little kit. I did not know that this was around $73. I think that's a lot for this product, but um, I went to link it for you, I think a couple weeks ago, and I was very surprised. Primer is on the skin. I'm going to take a little vitamin E and I'm going to prep my lips because they're going to need to be really nice and moisturized prior to doing our little lip trick, little lip hack and what have you. And that's going to be with our clear lip liner. So I have a clear lip liner. I've had it for years in my line and it's wonderful because it is going to stop the feathering. It's going to prime the lips. It's going to really help you if you have that problem. I'm also going to be showing you another way to use this on your face, which will really help if you get foundation in your laugh line. So we're going to start off with our eye primer. We're going to go in and we're going to neutralize out my eyes. So you can see right now that it is very apparent that I have this darkness on my eyelids and as I age, they seem to be getting darker and I want my eyeshadow to last all day. I don't want it to be mixed in with the reds and the darkness and the blues and the veins and whatever else you're seeing on my eyelids right now. So I basically neutralize out the eye and I start with a even canvas. Eye primer is on. Now I'm going to go in with the Chanel. This is the new tweed compact. I got, which one did I get? I got the number four, I think it is, or the Brune and Rose. Of course I did. It has to say Rose on it, but I've never loved Chanel eyeshadows because I never found them to be very pigmented. I guess if you don't like a lot of color, it would be a great palette for you. It's already like falling apart. It's like this. I don't know. I, I'm just disappointed with just the quality of the Chanel shadows always have been, but I, I went for it because I thought, oh, the tweed looks like it's more pigmented and I haven't put it on my eyes yet, but this lightest color literally is falling apart. It's just like breaking apart. So it must be very soft, but we're gonna try and see what happens with this. I'm gonna try the lightest color. It's like a taupe color and I'm gonna see what we get here on the eye. I really wanted a nice fall color. It doesn't even pick up the shadow. Do you see this? doesn't even pick up the shadow. I mean, I don't even know if I want to waste doing, um, you know what? I'm not going to let's go into, I'm going to go into strong brew, same kind of color concept here. It's a matte palette. It's really my go-to. I'm just been so disappointed with expensive makeup and I don't feel like showing you something that I know I don't even have anything on the brush. We'll use the same brush right now. We'll go into this taupe color and we will, so you can see the difference. Do you see, this was the other side of where the Chanel, this is my side. That's what I'm talking about is just why work so hard at my age now, ladies. And yes, I am 46. I will be soon to be 47 next month, my birthday month, October. I am a Libra. I don't know what it means because I don't follow astrology, but everyone always asks. So I know what I am, but I don't have time to play games with eyeshadows, especially ones that just don't do any payout. I don't like it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe when I was younger, I would like to be playing around with stuff and, you know, building and, but now, you know, older and wanting to have products work for me. And I just, maybe I just don't have the patience anymore to play games with just subpar eyeshadows. I'm going to take my tapered brush that just has a little point. I'm going to go into the nice milk chocolate that is going to give me some definition my eye area here. And I like to kind of take it down on the lash line. I sometimes do that. You'll see in my makeup tutorials that I like to kind of do a triangle. Sometimes I'll just take it really low here and I'll come out. Just depends on my mood and what I'm trying to create. But today we are going to go in with a beautiful fall lipstick, which is really the lipstick color of the fall 2022 season. As they have predicted, it is a darker color. It's that wine, really beautiful Cabernet plummy color. Not for everyone, one, but I will show you how we can kind of build it up if you don't like to have a very strong color. I know as we age and more lines start showing up on our lips that we don't really love to have a darker lip, but there's a lot of things that you can do 
to downplay that really bright color or that dark color. So you can really get into the trends. If you want to do something different, you want to go out of your safety box with your colors on your lips. I'm going to show you how to do that. So in order to just get everything to blend nicely together, I take my blending brush here and I'm going to just blend it all together. So there's no demarcation. There's nothing that looks like it stops or goes too high. This is one of my favorite brushes. I'm so happy I brought it into the new essential makeup brush collection because it was what I was missing. And now we have the most beautiful 10 piece set in this brush kit. Eyeshadow is nicely blended. If you did want to have something that was going to give you a little bit more sheen, you could top it off with Hourglass Has Scattered Light. It's a really pretty, just on the top, if you wanted to give a little sheen or a little, maybe you're going out to a cocktail party and you want a matte eye, but you want a little extra. These are really beautiful. They are glitter though, so you just need a little bit, but it does give you a really nice sheen. Or you can take another palette that has sheen and just go over your eyes and give it just that extra wow factor. I'm going to curl my lashes first before I do my eyeliner. Lashes are curled, very important step ladies. You want to see your lashes, they do make a big difference. Even if you feel like you don't have a lot of lash, you will see them once you do curl your lashes. Going in with waterproof dark chocolate and I'm going to line my eyes like I normally do where I go to the base of my lash and I literally am on the eye lash line. So I'm actually moving my lashes. So I know that I'm just thickening up that lash line. This looks beautiful for women over 50, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, because you're really getting into where your lashes are and making them look thicker. Even if you don't have a lot of lashes, this really is very powerful. I do this in my fierce aging series with my mom. Like it was very, she has very, very fine lashes. They're very straight. But the second that we take this eyeliner and we go to the base, and we really give her more of that lash line, it doesn't matter that she doesn't have that many lashes. It really looks beautiful, really nicely outlines her eye and pulls her look together. So that is what we're doing. We're just tapering it down to the inner corner here. You can go as thick as you want, but remember you don't wanna take up too much real estate because you're making your eyes look heavier. If you have hooded eyes, you want to concentrate on your lashes and you want to concentrate on making them stay up and really looking like you have those lashes. If not, you can use a lids by design, pull the lid back so you actually can see your lash line. So I'm just going to taper it down to the inner corner of the nose here and I'm going to just really nicely give this definition. If you feel that you didn't put your eyeliner on properly or you have shaky hands or you feel that it basically doesn't look nice and neat or what the way you want to, I have a little brush that I call my eraser brush. This is a easy brush to sweep across the lash line where you just did your eyeliner and it's going to just blend it out. So if you feel like it's all over the place, I've done that before many times and I look closer and I'm like, wait, what happened? I'll go back with my brush and I'll just sweep it across so you have that really beautiful, just diffused eyeliner look that looks like you literally had it done professionally, but you're just using this brush and cleaning it up. The reason why I don't do my concealer foundation or anything on my skin is because I can easily clean up with my all May pad right now and not worry about anything being disturbed. So if I have anything that fell down, the shadow, the eyeliner's a little bit further out than I wanted it to, I can take it off easily with my makeup pad, just like this. So again, I never do my, my face first. I think that that is really doing it backwards. Do your eyes first, clean up, and then go into a beautiful, beautiful skin. I'm going to use my L'Oreal lash primer because I love the way that this makes my lashes look. This is my first coat. This is going to prime my eyes. So it's going to, or prime my eyelashes. It's going to just really lengthen and make my lashes look thicker. So this is my first coat. It is white. I get this at the drugstore. It is really a nice little hack if you have short lashes or you don't have a lot of lashes and you really want to maximize your lashes, you're going to use a primer. And I've tried, you know, Lancome's, I've tried more expensive ones. We tried the Chanel one recently that was a sample, but I really like the L'Oreal. It's just very easy. It's inexpensive. And again, you're going to be throwing away your mascara every three months. Put a little brother's label on it when you open it and then you throw it away every three months. That's why ladies, it doesn't matter how much you spend on your mascara. You're throwing it away every three months because you're using it on your eyes every day and you do not want to get an infection. I'm using my mascara that is going to give me lots of volume, has tiny little teeth on it. So it's going to grip my lashes. I'm going to go from the base 
And then I'm going to just go straight up right over all of the primer that I just put on. So it's just really gives a beautiful look, gives you really more than you think that you have when it comes to your lashes, just beautiful. Mascara is on. Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference of using the primer first and then using a volumizing mascara, especially one that has a brush that's gripping those lashes? It's not just rolling over them with this big fluffy brush that you can't control. You want to be able to control and be able to precisely put on your mascara. That is always a big frustration, ladies, when you are going to your eyes, wanting to make them look beautiful and like stand out and you're struggling with your mascara. You don't want to struggle with your mascara. You want it to look beautiful. Now we're going to go into our skin. I'm going to color correct my face today because I was wearing my glasses and I had that redness around my nose. So I go in with my no redness, which is a little green, like a minty green that's going to cancel out the red. And I have my just peachy that you know that I always share in my videos because it is like my holy grail for brightening my under eye. They are beauty sticks. It's medium to full coverage. So this is something that I like to kind of do like as a mosaic, if you will. So I usually have the red here or the red around my nose here. So it depends on how much I really want to put on each day. And I'll put the Just Peachy right underneath my eyes here. I bring it down a little bit because we know I also, everybody knows that I struggle with a little bit of that pigmentation, that, that texture, that redness, what have you. And this is just really nice and silky. So it goes into the skin nice and creamy, and then it's going to be like a nice satiny, silky finish. So it's not greasy. It's going to just nicely give that color correction that I need, because now when I put my foundation over my BB cream, what have you, it's not going to have to work as hard. It's not going to be like, oh, I just put on, you know, my foundation or my concealer and all that skin's showing through. And then I got to put on more. And then it's like all this cakiness and this heaviness. You just want to be more simplistic, but color correcting over 40 is like a game changer. You have to change the color first. You've got to lift the color. And I really learned this when I was working for Dermablend. So back in the day, this was in the 90s, I was a clinical specialist for Dermablend. And they, if you don't know about Dermablend, they have beautiful products that help cover varicose veins on the on the legs or if you had a port wine stain or if you had vitiligo or all these different issues i would work at the counter all over south florida and the plastic surgeons and dermatologists would send their patients to the counter and I would work with all kinds of different issues with the skin. And it was so fascinating. But what I really learned was, is that when you have, say you have a port wine stain or you have the vitiligo, like you can't just go in and be like, oh, I'm just gonna cover it, what have you. You first have to neutralize it out and then be able to go over with your concealer or your foundation or whatever you're doing. Oh, it was so powerful. I loved working with these ladies. It was just literally life-changing for them when we would correct whatever the issue was on their face or wherever we were working with. It was just such a really beautiful experience for me because I was able to really change the way a woman basically came. I had women coming that couldn't even look at me when they came to the counter. And when we addressed the issue, she was a different woman afterwards. And it was just so much gratification for me as a specialist, as an esthetician, as somebody that really wants to make a change in women's lives, that it was just like, wow, she came in so insecure and so ashamed. And then it was like, let's work with this. Here's what we need to do. You're going to look amazing afterwards. It was like a different person. It was just so powerful. Color corrector is on. You can put it on anything that you want. I really concentrate on like the center of my face to make it nice and just really even. Going in with my two BB creams that I like, fair and light. I like to mix. A lot of the times I have to mix foundations too. Sometimes they're too dark, sometimes or too light as you've seen me on my channel when I buy certain ones and I'm like I think they're too light and then I'll just bronze it up I'll put a little poolside I have a really nice bronzer here it's a sheer glow and it just bronzes up my foundations a little bit um you know what? we'll put that in today since we're we're doing that I just put two just small little squirts of my BB cream and then we'll put a little poolside this is really fun it's nice glow Nice little glow, which is just small. So you can see just all together. I don't need a lot today. I just want to mix them all together and then we'll put this on and we'll just buff it into the skin. Using my foundation buffing brush, I'm going to just buff this BB cream into my skin. This is my BB cream that I designed to be for mature women. It has a lot of properties from aloe, chamomile, ginseng to really help moisturize your skin, really help your skin feel hydrated and just not have this 
BB cream sitting on your face. You want it to just really make you look like you're glowing, you're hydrated, you have this really fresh skin, but you're not covering it up. And then I just take the rest of the BB cream and I will pull it down on my neck so everything is pulled together. Let's do a little Nikita banana real quick. We're gonna be doing the lips very, very quickly so we can you know, kind of give you this little hack. Sometimes I'll take my blending brush and I'll go into the powder. And if you want to really be precise underneath your eyes, this is a great way to set. So we have these for sale individually, which is great. You can get a couple where you can just have them for specific reasons. I just like how fluffy it is. It doesn't hold a lot of the powder and then you really get a nice setting just right underneath your eyes. So we're going to be using an invisible lip liner. This is a great way to create a border around your lips so your lipstick doesn't feather or go out into those lines and start migrating during the day. Another great way to use this is if that if you have these laugh lines, there is nothing wrong with them. That's just meaning you are very happy and joyful throughout your life. We all have them. But if you find that your foundation or any of your mediums, maybe a CC cream or what have you, or tinted moisturizer you're putting on, starts to gather here during the day, you can use your invisible lip liner and you can place it right in those little lines there to give you that border, to give you so it doesn't fall into those kind of lines or there's those deep set lines. So that's just another way that you can use this. So we're going to line the lip first because we're gonna be doing a beautiful dark color and I don't want it to move. Invisible lip liner is on as my border and you can put your lip liner over it also. So I'm going to take our deep plum and I'm going to just line my lips over the invisible lip liner. Lip liner is on, this is deep plum. What's really nice about the invisible lip liner is that it gives your lip like that little lift. You can see that it kind of fills out the lip and that is one of the features that I really like. So this is called, so beautiful, it is so pretty, and it's called Fearless. And I think that a lot of women are afraid to wear a dark color, hence why I created this lipstick called Fearless, because you're really fearless when you wear a dark color. You don't have to go from the bullet to your lip and have this like, whoa, overpowering lip. This is the It color for fall, so you're gonna see this a lot. It's a wine color. I have a lip brush now. I have a retractable brush that I created, and it has a concealer brush on the other end. So it's a dual brush, which I think is great, but I love the fact that the lip brush comes in the kit because when you want to be precise, maybe you want to just get a little tint for your lips with a dark color, you can do it very easily this way by using a lip brush. So a lip brush is very important for women that are more mature to be able to apply the color properly, really just be on the lips and not over apply the product from the bullet. So you have more control. So this is, look how beautiful this color is. This is such a beautiful color, but you don't have to go that dark. So I'm gonna apply it, I'm gonna blot it, and then we're gonna see what it looks like. The lip is on more of a stain, so this is fearless. This is a very fearless look when you're wearing a darker lip, but you can blot this even more. I'm going to just put a little of my embrace over it. It's going to kind of neutralize it out in, in a way. It's going to give it, you can see, this is more of a just natural lip gloss. It's more opaque. So I can take it down a little bit and not have it so much of that wine color. It's still gonna be nice and dark. It's going to be really beautiful. And it's just something that you can, you can now know that you can use invisible lip liner to keep this dark color on your lips. You can wear a dark lip, you can wear a red lip, you can wear a coral lip. You can do all of these different things if you do have those fine lines that are starting to appear and then you start seeing your lip gloss or your lipstick just kind of escaping and, and migrating and kind of growing legs and moving all over your face. I know it's very frustrating, but the invisible lip liner is going to be your best friend. It's going to to give you that lip boost. It's going to make your lips look fuller because you're going to be able to line them, keep the lipstick on, and just really be able to feel confident wearing a darker color. So last step we're gonna do is just a little Palm Beach, still in the same family. We're going to take it on our cheeks again. Cream blush is wonderful for our mature skin. It's going to just like melt into the skin. It's gonna look like second skin. It's not gonna look like powder sitting on the skin. This is what it's going to 
just be really beautiful. So the hair is down, the lips are on, you're on trend. If you want to do a nice, beautiful, darker color for fall, it is not overly trendy because classic colors like wine colors, red colors are always in style. Just depends on your personal style. If you like it, if you think you want to kind of get outside of your normal nude lip, your pink lip, I think it's such a beautiful time to experiment with lip colors. And now that you have that invisible lip liner, you know how to keep your lipstick on your lips and not migrating. So until my next video, I'll see you later. Thank you.